So thanks for the, making time for this presentation. Actually, is the audio on? Audio is okay. So I am going to introduce Vinedi, and uh, this is very, very what the company is all about. But we are in Armenia also, so I'm going to talk about why Armenia, why Vinedi chose to come to Armenia beyond, besides just me being Armenia, there was actually more to it, which we're going to talk to it. So, but I'm going to talk about what problem are we solving, why software is important, why Armenia became important for Vinedi. So, first is, uh, as Aram said, <coughs> uh, this, uh, first of all, what Vinedi is, it is a software company focused on commercializing uh, a new wave of uh, uh, drugs that they're coming to market that is called precision medicine, which means what precision medicine means is a lot of the drugs today, like pills that people buy for some kind of a disease, is made at a batch of 10,000 or hundreds of thousands for specific disease, like penicillin or aspirin or many forms of other uh, products. New generation of therapies, which are pharmaceutical products, is called precision medicine, which means they're learning how to make a drug that is tied to specific makeup of a uh, individual. And love the, almost like 40% of the next generation of pharmaceutical products are really precision made. That means the, the therapy is tied to the patient. Where they're seeing a tremendous result in this is what's known as a CAR-T therapy. CAR-T is your parts of your white blood cells that they're learning how to extract that from the, say, a leukemia patient, engineer that blood cells to fight the cancer. And they're learning to do this with uh, leukemia uh, cancer initially. As a matter of fact, Last week, FDA, which is the regulatory body in the U.S., gave the uh, commercial license to Novartis to sell this in a, in a, uh, for leukemia patients in the U.S., which is going to expand it to Europe. But what we're seeing is this precision medicine, as you can see, it's a curative result. It's not just delays the cancer. It actually, with leukemia, skin cancer, they're seeing a 50 to 70, up to 80 percent curative result. So what sort of led to this? What sort of this uh, precision medicine sort of was been happening the last 20, 30 years? We're sort of seeing a sort of a major influence, but everybody knows about DNA sequencing. That sort of was the foundation of we learn about how to we that, uh, encode uh, uh, human's uh, DNA. We learn from that how to do gene editing, how to modify a, whether it's a abnormal gene or modify the gene to be able to react to disease. This led to immuno-oncology and stem cell. What's immuno-oncology? Immuno-oncology uses your immune system. You modify your white blood cells to fight the disease back. When you have a cancer, usually your immune system does not fight the cancer. And they really learn from these two technologies how to modify the cells in your uh, immune system to fight the, the cancer. And really what led this um, is this one patient in 2012. Her name is Emily Whitehead at the University of Pennsylvania that they sort of learned by essentially applying gene editing. She was a leukemia patient. She was uh, young. She was going to die at 2012. They sort of, uh, essentially she was one of the first cases that actually used uh, this CAR T therapy to sort of uh, cure her leukemia in 2012. So this sort of what led to commercialization of the first wave of the precision medicine tied to uh, immuno-oncology. But it, what it, this is doing is sort of creating a whole category of pharmaceuticals, a whole category of companies that initially the blood cancer or leukemia is where they're starting this, uh, the therapies. But then the next wave is solid tumor. Next wave is the hereditary diseases because it all goes back into gene editing. They're learning how to mod modify your genes to sort of fix either the deficiencies or be able to fight the disease back. Again, it is a big market because I said up to 40% of the next wave of pharmaceutical is going to be tied to this kind of therapies. Now the question is, that's the science. Okay, so our company, Vanetti, 
we're not a therapy company. We sort of build a software stack for this next wave of therapeutics that they're focused in this space. The question is, why is software important? So a lot of the Novartis of the world or the big or small biotechs of the world, they're sort of doing this disco the drug discovery, but what they want to do is sell curative therapies at a large scale. So what's missing in this new precision medicine is there is a technology gap to be able to make this therapy, which is what happened to Emily, but make it available to a broader patient population. The question is, why does software matter? So let me skip this. This is what we do. We do a platform that makes this curative effect scale in the large uh, patient population. But let me sort of describe to you how gene editing works. So gene editing starts with a raw product from the patient, blood, or a DNA sequence from a solid tumor. You send that result to a company like Novartis, which they sort of have a manufacturing facility for gene editing tied to specific disease like leukemia or melanoma or others. They sort of re-engineer re the cells tied to one patient. The final product, which is what gets uh, uh, produced as a product that is designed for rosmix leukemia, gets shipped back to the patient at, say, Stanford Medical Center to be infused to the patient. Notice this cycle is different than the pill. Pill is manufactured inside a manufacturing four walls, and that's where uh, pharmaceuticals uh, responsibility lies. This model the, the drugs uh, uh, safety, the drugs uh, uh, patient safety, the drugs compliance that the regulators care. It starts with point of care doing this, right? Because I have to extract that blood from Rosmic's uh, uh, body at Stanford Medical Center. These two steps happen in Novartis gene editing. The final step goes back into patient at Stanford. So the cycle that the patient interacts with that precision medicine starts from the hospital to pharma back to the hospital. So what's missing is to do that is a software system that can manage ordering, scheduling, blood collection at the hospital to transportation, to manufacturing, to back to the patient. So you sort of have to guarantee this cycle end-to-end -end is safe associate with the patient, and there's critical things come into play called chain of identity, chain of custody, which means how do you guarantee that Rosmic's product goes back to Rosmic? How do you guarantee that you do not give that to the wrong patient? Because if you give the wrong product to the wrong patient, it's a kill. How do you guarantee as you go through this workflow, this life cycle, you're not making a mistake that the system is reproducible at the commercial scale, at the, not at the volume of Emily for one person at the low scale, but at the volume of thousands or tens of thousands of patients at the higher volume, you have to guarantee this thing is operating correctly. Uh, co correctly. So this is what Venedi does. We build a software system that sort of streamlines this entire process from the ordering, scheduling, collection but they're tied to specific therapies for Novartis, for uh, uh, Genentech, for a slew of companies. There's up to 800 clinical trials happening in this space, and there's going to be a broad category of products coming to market from leukemia to melanoma to uh, sickle cell disease and so on and so on. So, th so you know, the thing is to do this software, notice this software for how many of you are computer science people in this room? So, this software has to live in the cloud. The only way you could do this, because remember, some of these components are at the hospital, some of these components are at the Novartis biotech manufacturing, but you have to guarantee this entire flow is happening correctly. The only way that's possible is to do that in the cloud in a safe, secure, and extremely compliant manner. This is what Venedi sells to companies. And it's really designed for any biotech company that is sort of doing their commercial studies. They're about to commercialize. They're about to go to FDA. 
they need to have a system like this to be able to sell at a larger scale. So again, last week, if uh, Novartis got the approval to sell the, uh, but if you read the fine line, it says they can only sell, they can only uh, deal with 300 patients a year for next year. The reason is twofold. One is it's a new product to market. Second one is they don't have this digital pipeline in production yet. For them to get to a next wave of customers, which is more like thousands of patients, they need a system like this into place. Again, as I said, what Vened is, it is a software. It's a software system we built from scratch that actually manages the entire chain. And uh, so that's what we do. But the company, as I said, the reason why I got interested in this company, one is that in my previous company, Documentum, we were actually also going after pharmaceutical. So at first, as I know, I have love inside in pharma space. We were also looking at how to manage the clinical trial documentation for big pharma. This sort of takes it to the next level. It's actually closer to drug discovery, uh, drug development pipeline. It's actually, this is sort of, the, sort of the workflow that actually delivers the product electronically from point of care all the way to um, uh, manufacturing. It also ties to patient safety. It ties to streamlining the entire uh, collection and the supply chain logistics. So it sort of has a, a lot more meaningful insight, and it's also new wave of therapy that is going to revolutionize the way pharmaceutical deals with very uh, acute diseases, whether it's cancer or hereditary uh, at large. But it's a software, software system in the cloud. It needs to be designed to work with uh, nurses, hospital uh, staff. It needs to work with pharmaceutical uh, 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 manufacturing people at the Novartis of the world. So it's a very mission critical software. If this system is down, say, for 10 minutes for bugs or other reason, it costs uh, Novartis tens of millions. So it's a very sizable system. So, and it does have big investors behind it. This is not kind of a software that you could go in the garage, build it, and sell it to Novartis. First of all, Novartis would want a company that has sizable investment behind it. So, uh, because all of our customers are mid-size to large-size bi 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 uh, biotech or pharma companies, and Remember, this company wants into production. These therapies are there for a long number of years. As a matter of fact, our software not only is digitizing the product flow, product delivery flow, it's also going to be involved with uh, patient monitoring after treatment. So which means once the system goes into place for the next 10, 20 years, it has to be uh, you know, operating. So it's not something you use and next year you forget it sort of a production system for a, for a long time to come. That's why it's something like this requires not only a, a kick-ass team, software developers, designers, product managers, but requires a very agile organization. And then, as I said, we originally started the company in Silicon Valley, um, but my management team, my board was asking me, hey, Rosmik, when are you gonna extend the team outside Silicon Valley? Because we need to grow and also our Customer base is in US, and where is half of the biotech company in the world in Europe, right? They're either in Basel, Switzerland, France, Germany, Israel, and all of those countries. So half of our customer base, they're going to be in US, other half is going to be in Europe. So we, uh, we started saying, okay, they asked ask me, you know, Rosmik, let's extend the company to traditional places, India, China, Hungary. I uh, said, okay, how about Armenia? They said, why Armenia? I said, are there developers in Armenia? I said, yes. So I had to tell a story to our uh, board members, which is, this is GE Venture, Draper Fisher Jefferson, which is the investor behind Tesla. So they said, tell me about Armenia. We have no idea what Armenia, we know about Armenian wine and cognac, but we know about some of the other people. So I had to educate, which some of you know about this, the stats behind the Armenia IT. And then I had to talk about some of the other good stuff, which you know, the cognac, uh, the shoe, and uh, uh, other effect. And then I, I had to go and talk about, you know, all of this other stuff that everybody knows about. But really led to uh, the Conan in Armenia, which uh, the other person that is important in Venedi, I hired uh, Nurses Ohanian, who leads our product development for um, 
And Nerses and Conan met. So there was a personal connection. A lot of the art board members knew Conan, and this picture was important. But it led into two years ago, in, uh, when I was here, we sort of uh, had an event called Create Together. So Create Together was a forum where a lot of the Silicon Valley high-tech people from Armenian descent came here to Yerevan, and we were trying to sort of collaborate and uh, essentially create new things uh, in Armenia Yerevan. So if you notice in this picture, Rosmik is there, Nerses is there, and actually our product designer, Eric, was also there too. And actually what's more important is the last day of the event. Uh, here is Rosmik, here is Nerses, and who is in the middle is uh, Digron, which is going to speak to. So Digron leads Venedi Armenia, and he's sort of our anchor person, that sort of core, core person we hired first uh, in February of uh, this year. And around Digron, we build a team, and we're going to talk about where we want to go and why Venedi Armenia is important to Venedi at large. Uh, it's not about only the engineers, we also have, want to have the balanced team. By saying balanced team, we, need, we mean designers, product managers, uh, and the uh, software engineers, like the team that would cover uh, the entire flow, and also uh, the QA. <laughs> yeah, right. So another good point, another uh, important thing I want to highlight here is what we call here follow the sun. Well, you may know that we are 12 hour difference uh, against uh, San Francisco or against Los Angeles time zone. So for, uh, for some people this may seem like a disadvantage, but for us it's like it's, a, it's an advantage because we cover uh, 24 hour a day. Uh, if any of our customers will call us, will feel, uh, there is somebody to pick up the phone and uh, either it will be from Armenia or from San Francisco team. So we have 24 hour coverage there. Um, and also you may notice that uh, with these plans we are planning uh, to grow 100% year over year. So 10 people this year, 20 plus people next year. Uh, it's a bit of aggressive plans but I think we can uh, accomplish that. Okay. Uh, the next important thing I want to talk about is uh, the product line that we have. You may notice this slide that Rasmik presented. This is the flow that we are going through and the product line we are covering. I'm extremely excited to say that one of the products from this flow was designed here from the scratch. So with this team here, with five people here, we were able to design and develop a product from scratch that meets all the uh, healthcare regulation and HIPAA compliance uh, of U.S. market. That's that's a huge thing for me. Uh, and I'll, at the end, uh, uh, I want to say, uh, in this presentation, we have a single ask. The ask is, we are hiring now, and if you have any good developers, designers, PMs, or any QA people, feel free to refer us because uh, we have this aggressive growth plan and we need to uh, make sure that we are uh, done with that. So thank you, thank you for coming, that's it. Thank you.